Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will give you an introduction to Kotlin multi-platform and multi-module architecture. So whether you are a KMP developer and you've just maybe heard this term of a multi-module architecture or Gradle module somewhere and you have no idea what that is, or if you're maybe a native Android developer who knows what a Gradle module is on the native Android side and you now want to learn about how that works on KMP and what really differs there, then this video is for you. And I can also already say, if you want to apply such a multi-module architecture in a larger project, then you can still get 30% discount on my new KMP bundle, link is below, only until the end of the week. So here I am in a completely blank Cognon multi-platform project, just in the way it is generated from Android Studio's project wizard. Make sure that you are actually here in the project view and not the Android one, which is the default, but in the project view, we really get all these details here, also the non-Android ones. But before we actually take a look at this project structure and also create a real module and multi-modules, let's first of all understand what a module really is in the context of Gradle and Kotlin multi-platform. Because a module is nothing else than a library. Every single library that you may include here in your Kotlin multi-platform project, the moment you have such an implementation line for some kind of source set, I'll also get to what a source set really is in this video, but every single of these libraries that are linked here from our version catalog those are nothing else than modules. So technically, we are already using multiple modules here in our project because we are using multiple libraries. However, this is not really what multi-module architecture typically means because the same way we can load a library here from the network via a certain identifier. So it's not really a URL here, but it's in the end an identifier that links to some kind of remote repository where this library is public together with all its classes, functions, variables that it brings. And the moment we add such a library and say, hey, implementation, that library, and we then synchronize Gradle, Gradle will actually download all these libraries' files from that source, from that repository where this library is published to, and include that here in our project. And you can also see this here under external libraries. So here are a bunch of libraries and code containers, after all, that Gradle has loaded. But the same way we can actually load such a module from a library, from a remote source, we can also create kind of our own library that we just reference locally in our project. And that is also a module. And now with Gradle, there are multiple different types of modules. One module we actually already see here, because this Compose app module that is generated here by the project wizard is the so-called application module. Every single KMP app needs this application module, or at least leads modules for each corresponding platform you target. So in our case, Android, iOS, and desktop. There's typically just one application module in the code base because the application module has the purpose to just contain the code with the entry points to your app for each platform. So entry points just means, hey, that is the piece of code that gets called first the moment we run our app. So on Android, this would contain our activity here with the onCreate function that sets up, sets up our UI on the Android side. Here in iOS, this would be the main view controller, which is referenced from our, our Xcode code base. And on desktop, that is a simple main function that gets called when the app is launching. And since every app, of course, just has a single entry point, single function that gets called when we launch it, that's why we also typically just have one application module. But yeah, that is what a module is. A module is in the end just a container for code. And every single module in Gradle has its own built at Gradle file. Since we have by default here just a single module, we only have the single Gradle file. We also have this root level Gradle file I'll get to in a moment. But for the module, we just have the single Gradle file where we add our libraries, where we configure how this module is actually how this module should be built, for example. So we define which specific platforms you want to target. So here, Android. Then we have our iOS targets. We have the JVM targets for the desktop platforms. And then here we can define which other references, which other modules we want to include here in our Compose app module. So which code do we want to be able to access? And before we actually get to the advantages that such a multi-module architecture could have on practice, let's create our very first second module, the so-called library module. And that works simply via Android Studios module wizard so we can just click on our root package here right click a new module and then here at the very bottom we want to have such a Kotlin multi-platform shared module and then you can give your module a name in this case let's leave it at shared and simply click finish what you will then notice is that gradle will add this folder here it will synchronize and after that sync is finished we should see some kind of a identifier here some kind of icon that shows us in android studio that this is really a module recognized by, by Gradle. And that is exactly what happens now. So you can see here, we have this little bluish icon, while for the application modules, we have this green icon. That is how you can distinguish these. What's also important to know is that if we open the settings Gradle file, then here, behind the scenes, Gradle has actually added this include line for the shared module. And this line in the end just tells Gradle, hey, there is actually a shared folder in our project 
And this is not just a plain directory, a plain folder, but it's actually a folder that should be recognized as a module. That is a folder that has its own Gradle file again, as you can see, which you can open here. And this Gradle file looks comparably to our other Gradle file that I've opened previously, but it is actually a little bit different because what we now have here is not an application module, but a library module. And in contrast to the application modules, we may have multiple library modules in our project. So the same way we can reference and include multiple libraries here in our version catalog and then say simply here, implement uh, implementation and then add that library from the version catalog. The same way we can kind of define our own internal libraries in our project, our own internal containers of code, of utility, of UI, whatever you want, and then define these dependencies between our local modules in Android Studio. So which module is allowed to access classes and files from which other module? Because right now, if we go to our shared module and we open this source folder, where we also have all of these source sets I will get to in a moment, and open common main, for example, if we now create a class here, for example, hello world, then this hello world class, we could just normally implement here. But if we go to our compose app module and in common main, for example, and here in our app KT file, we would want to reference this hello world class that now comes from a different module. Then you will notice the moment we type this here, it's actually it's actually not auto-completing. There is actually no variant found here from Gradle. And the reason is that our Compose app module technically does not know that there is an additional shared module that has this class. Because by default, such Gradle modules are completely isolated standalone containers of code. If we now want to access this Hello World KT file from our shared module in another module, like this Compose app module, then we have to explicitly declare this dependency again in the Gradle file of the module that should use this code. So in Compose app Gradle file, we can open this here, and just like we can say implementation for an external library, we can also say implementation for an internal library by simply saying, let's put this at the bottom here, by simply saying something like implementation project, so here we don't reference something from the version catalog, but we want to reference a module from our own project that Gradle doesn't have to load from a remote source, and that works with this project accessor, and there is our shared module. And if we now add that and we synchronize Gradle, and then go back to our app KT file and try this again to type hello world here, then suddenly our class is recognized because we have declared this dependency that our Compose app module is allowed to access all the files and classes defined in our shared module. And this is in the end the whole idea behind a multi-module architecture that here in our product hierarchy, we have our single application module, which stays there, which still needs to contain the entry points. But then we have multiple such library modules, which are in the end just standalone isolated containers for code that helps you achieve a certain goal. So for example, you could package a feature into such a module. So a feature together with all the classes and functionality that belongs to this feature, but then you would have that feature as a standalone module that you could use elsewhere, not only in this project, but technically also in another project. Here we come to the first advantage of a multi-module architecture, because the moment you put your code in such Gradle modules, and it's not all put here some, whoops, somewhere in this compose app source common main, Technically, you could put all your code in here and it would be accessible globally in the project. But the moment you add multiple modules, you could actually extract a real library out of this module. So you could take this module and actually reuse that in other projects. And if you actually get into that and you learn how you can structure these modules in a way that they are pretty isolated and standalone and independent of the rest of the project, then this can really save you a lot of code later on if you need the same functionality somewhere else. So you can pretty much build your own arsenal of libraries here. And how this works, how you can structure these modules intelligently, that again is covered in the bundle, link below. But the ability to take such a module and reuse that in other projects is not the only advantage such a multi-module architecture can have. Another advantage is, and let me close all this here so this doesn't confuse you, another advantage that can have are actually faster Gradle builds. Because the moment you have multiple modules, Gradle will actually be able to build each of these modules independently. And that means it really just needs to rebuild the code in those modules that have changed in some way. So if we make a change here in our shared module, we change something about this Hello World class, and we launch our app, then just the shared module has to be rebuilt by Gradle, but not the Compose app one. And this is actually something that Gradle is also pretty good at in single module projects that is called incremental builds, that it kind of tracks which files have changed. But something that is possible with a multi-module architecture is that Gradle can actually build multiple modules in parallel. So either way, this can lead to faster Gradle builds. However, it is something that you will typically only notice when this project really scales and reaches a certain scale. And it also requires that you don't have a multi-module structure that is a kind of spaghetti code where all the modules depend on each other because you can imagine 
if one module changes and all other modules depend on that module, all these other modules will also have to be rebuilt because technically that change in one module could have also caused a change in all these others. But another advantage of a multi-module architecture can be that work and tasks can just be better distributed in a team. So if you are working in a larger team on a single code base, then you can actually let individual developers, so maybe smaller teams of that big team of developers, work on individual isolated modules. So you can say, hey, team A, you work on the shared module, team B, you work on the other shared module or the Compose app module, whatever. And because you can enforce these directions of dependency, so which modules depend on each other, you can also achieve this that in a large team, individual developers don't really get in each other's way because you can say, okay, team A can't even access the code and accidentally break the code from team B because there is no dependency between the modules these developer teams work on. And that advantage is actually also an advantage in a different topic when it comes to software architecture. Very often we work with different layers. For example, a presentation layer, a domain layer for business logic, and something like a data layer. And these architecture layers have very clear dependencies defined, so which layer is allowed to access which other layer. And if you actually have such layered, and if you actually put code for a specific layer in an isolated module, you can really enforce those architectural dependencies so you couldn't even accidentally break your architectural dependencies. Well, if you put all your layers, all your architecture, all your code in the single common main source set here of this Compose app module, but technically you could import any class that is somewhere in the source set even if that would violate your architecture. So that in regards to the theory of what such a module really is. Let's take a little look at Kotlin multi-platform modules here specifically, because these modules definitely look differently compared to Android library modules compared to normal Kotlin modules, because that also exists. If we take a look at the module wizard here again, there's also a Kotlin library module. That is not a Kotlin multi-platform module, because if we take a look into one of our modules, let's take a look at the Compose app build Gradle here, scroll to the top at the plugins. Here you can see certain Gradle plugins are applied just for that module again. On the one end, we have a Kotlin multi-platform Gradle plugin. And this is really what tells Gradle that this is not just a, a normal Kotlin library module, but one for Kotlin multi-platform. And that is required. You can't actually reference normal Kotlin library modules in a Kotlin multi-platform project because Kotlin multi-platform is kind of special. You can see we have these different source sets again. So we have Android main, common main and iOS main, for example. And if we would now reference and include a library that is just a plain Kotlin library, a plain Kotlin module, without this Kotlin multi-platform config, then there would be nothing that tells our Kotlin multi-platform module how a certain code actually looks like on each platform that we target here. And that is why in Kotlin multi-platform projects, we can only reference libraries and we can only reference modules that actually implement and use this Kotlin multi-platform Gradle plugin because that again comes with us having to define all these different variants for certain pieces of code. So this is how the Gradle file here at the top looks like for our application module. So if the call to multi-platform Gradle plugin, we have an Android application plugin. This tells us that the Android main source set here is really the entry point for the Android side, some compose multi-platform plugins and so on. But if we take a look in the shared modules build at Gradle file, we can see oh, the call to multi-platform plugin is also applied here. But now it doesn't apply the Android application module, but the Android Kotlin multi-platform library. Because a library module in Gradle may just have slightly different config than an application module. So there are just pieces of Gradle config that just make sense for the application module, and there are pieces of config that just make sense for a library module. But you can also see, for a library module, we also have to declare things like the compile and minimum SDK. And this now relates just to the code inside that library module. And because such a library module can be very standalone, it does not need to depend on the rest of our project in any way. That is also why it needs to bring its own config for these kinds of things, like the compiler minimum SDK on the Android side. A KMP library module needs to again define which specific platforms it targets. So here iOS, for example. Here with this Android library, it says, hey, we have an Android target. This library should be usable in another KMP module that also has an Android target. And if we scroll down, uh, we actually see there is no desktop target. Nothing tells us here that this is usable for desktop, but if we would want that, we would need to set this up here by simply calling JVM. This will set up the JVM target here in Gradle. But with that, we really come here to the source sets, which are not modules, don't confuse these. But in Kotlin Multiplatform, every module consists of multiple source sets, and the source set is really just a part of the code of a module. And the source sets defined in a module can now actually also be 
connected and combined. So we can actually form a real source set hierarchy that source sets depend on each other all within a single Gradle module. And that makes sense if we think about it. If we, for example, want to launch the Android app here, then on the one hand, this Android main part here needs to be built and packaged into that Android APK, but also the common main source set and the code inside it, because it's called common main for a reason. That contains code that all these other source sets can use. Therefore, also the Android one. So in this case, Gradle would combine the code from the Android main source set and the common main source set and package that part here together in an APK. If we build the iOS side, then it doesn't care about the Android main source set, but it will combine the common main and iOS main source sets, and that for each module in this hierarchy. What you can actually also do in Kotlin Multiplatform is you can create your own hierarchies and your own source sets. So for example, you could create something like a mobile main source set in which you say, in this mobile main source set that depends on common main, can also access classes from there, but it includes code that may be shared between iOS and Android main. So that is a non-default source set that you could create, however, with the help of Gradle. And that's also something we'll do in the Kotlin full stack developer bundle, since that is a bit more advanced. But that in the end is really what Gradle modules in Kotlin multi-platform are really all about. So just remember, each module, isolated container of code, each module has its own dedicated Gradle config in which you can say which Gradle rules apply to just that module. So same here for the library module, slightly different config. And then we also have this root level Gradle file which could technically apply, uh, apply Gradle config for the entire project, for all modules. But typically, it just looks like this, uh, where all these plugins are referenced with apply false that will put them on the so-called class path so that Gradle knows them without yet applying them at the root level. But then we can apply them here uh, in individual modules by adding this alias line here in the plugins block. And let me tell you, coming up with a really solid multi-module architecture for a bigger project where you don't end up with spaghetti code, that is not so trivial. And there is no one size fits all approach here that works for each and every project. But if you really get good at that, then you can really also improve the structure of your project. You can improve uh, the speed of your Gradle builds. You can improve how work in the team is split. And you can technically also extract certain parts out of your code base and reuse that in another code base. A big example would here, for example, be a design system module. So you could create such a shared module here that you don't call shared, but something like design system. And you imagine you are working at a company, the company has a certain, a certain branding style, and you create your very own custom set of UI components for buttons, for text fields, for chips, for certain uh, layouts that you may often need. You take all these UI components, package them together in such a module, and then in multiple apps that may be uh, maintained by that company, you can always just reference that single design system module as if it was a normal library, because it is a normal library. And you don't have to redefine this code over and over again, but just do it once, do it smart in an isolated way that it doesn't depend on anything else. And then this can really help you in a lot of projects. So if you want to learn how this really works in practice, link to the bundle is below. Until Sunday, 30%, as I mentioned, then the price will go up and also stay there for the next time. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing rest of your week. See you back in the next video. Bye-bye.